Hi everyone, welcome to the Martin Smith podcast. Um, I find myself in Sydney, Australia today with the most amazing friend and guest today. You're going to love this next hour. It's going to be so exciting. But before I introduce her, um, let me give you a little bit of a rundown of what this lady's been up to in her life. Um, she's written so many songs, so many church songs, uh, including things like Kiss of Heaven, The Potter's Hand, Victor's Crown. She's written books, The Golden Thread. It goes on and on and on. Um, this is amazing. It says, this, the, one of these songs has been performed for the Pope at the Vatican and for the President of the United States. Uh, the song has become one of the most well-known modern worship songs being sung by an estimated 25, 30 million churchgoers every Sunday, which is amazing since the song's release. And of course, that song is Shout to the Lord. And I've given away this incredible guest. Would you welcome <laughs> Darlene Check? Thanks, Mark. So How you good doing? to have you in Australia. It's I know. awesome. I can't believe it. It's awesome. And, and it's an honour to be on and your Anna podcast. Anna says hi. Oh, um, I texted her this morning, actually. She's, um, <laughs> she's your, I mean, oh, I mean I she her. adores yeah. you. Yeah. And we go back, uh, we were saying, we go back quite a long way now, yeah. don't we? Yeah. It's been quite a few years. And yeah. I remember hearing about you and what you were doing, you know, back sort of 1995. And, yeah. You know, I was I was playing in a band and we'd heard about all this amazing stuff coming out of Australia, all these songs and this church and incredible. <laughs> so I, I, I think I reached out or you reached out, I can't remember, but we connected and that was the yeah. beginning, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really special. Um, we connected at a music festival, I yeah. think, something like that. And our kids were there and... They, you were so kind to the kids, and for me, that's the that's <laughs> like the test, right? Because some people push past your yeah. children to come and talk to you, and I was like, nah, nah. but yeah. you were like, hey, and who are these people? And it was just, yeah. Uh, but yeah. And we've it, loved you ever since. No, likewise. It, but I remember that festival because, because uh, you know, you're Australian. Yeah. I'm English. All us guys were English, and we're, we're in, in America, America. <laughs> doing these festivals. Yeah. Which, well, certainly for us guys, they're just massive yeah. things. Yeah. You know, up to 100,000 people in a field. Yeah. And you're like, I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. And then um, they want to buy T-shirts and, like, have <laughs> CDs signed and then yeah. they have things called, you've got a signing scheduled. And we're like, yeah. what's a signing? Yeah. Never done that before in my life. Me oh, neither. no, no, you have to come with yeah. me. And you could, people get in a queue and you have yeah. to shake. And... Um, so probably for you as well, certainly for us, it was like, so oh, bizarre. this is a new thing. Yeah. Well, I, if I remember correctly, I didn't turn up <laughs> because I was like, who's going to turn up for me to sign anything? So I just didn't even consider going yeah. until we get a phone call from your then, was he your manager? Same, yeah. your, and he's like, you need to come here. And so I went and there was people there and I was so embarrassed. That's all I remember. I was so embarrassed. But you guys were like, come on in. It's fantastic. And you helped me get over the little hurdle of myself oh my <laughs> when we were at that festival. Oh, my goodness. I think um, one of the things for Anna and I that's been such an amazing blessing, in, you know, in our whole world, yeah. is, is always the friendship bit, isn't it? Yeah, always. So, you know, we connect, we make music, we do these events together often and lead worship at things, but it's always after yeah. the fun stuff, yes. isn't it? And yes. like the stuff that's not on the platform. Yeah, yeah. getting to talk and, and um, you know, we often say in the Smith household, oh, we're really thankful for the checks because mm. they, you've always sort of been one step ahead of us. You know, <laughs> you've all, you know, you had children slightly before yeah. us and then you had teenage children yeah. 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 <laughs> slightly before us and like oh how do you do that bit yeah and then how do, you know how do you do do you you know with all the the money side of stuff and then yeah this and that and mark was always you know he's, we'll get on to mark your, yeah, your beautiful husband amazing yeah. well look now i've mentioned mark tell us about <laughs> tell us about um your family and yeah well, Mark and I, next year, we would have been married 40 years. Wow. Okay. So we've been together since we were 17. And, um, yeah, he's always been 
just someone who's confident in who he is. Like mm. he's never been frazzled by, um, you know, celebrity yeah. or, you know, he's he's always been my biggest cheerleader, our girl's biggest cheerleader. He just says, if you're going to do it, you better do it really well. Yeah. So, you know, he was like, because it's going to cost all of us. Yeah. So if we're going to do this, let's do this. Um, <laughs> I'm like, oh, all right. Um, but he, he's always been the same. He's, he's the most consistent emotionally Emotionally consistent person, yeah. you know, there he's married to, to me <laughs> and there he, he's just amazing. Yeah. He's also, he's quite prophetic. Like he sees things from a business point of view and from yeah. a back end point of view. Yeah. Like he's always been brilliant in that space. Yeah. We've, you know, often people go, oh, wow, you guys, you've made money here and here, but it's not really been from music and worship although there has been blessing through there but actually mark's business yeah. head yeah without we have a media company that we've had for like 25 years and yeah. that is still booming and amazing and yeah. um and just the way he does real estate and now the way he leads a church like he's quite yeah um creative yeah insightful yeah i say prophetic um, and very very wise yeah yeah. That's my hubby. And I've always, he's always been the guy that I've run. Yeah. yeah. You know, at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Bro, what, yeah. how do I do this? Yeah. And he's like, right, sit down. Yeah. You know, this is what's going to, this yeah. is what's going to Grab happen. a cup but, of tea. <laughs> yeah. But it's interesting hearing you talk about, you know, businesses and that. Because mm-hmm. I think people listening to this podcast, you know, a lot of people in the worship community, yeah. a, lot, a lot of young people as well think, oh, like, all those guys do all day. It's just like they get up and then they're they're just singing all day. Singing, they're singing the song of the Lord all day yeah. till midnight, and yeah. they don't eat anything because they're just yeah. you know in the presence of God yeah. all day. Yeah. But actually, um, you know, like King David, right, was multifaceted, wasn't yeah. he? He yeah. he was the 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 one that God loved the most. Yeah, and yet he did. So, so many, many different things. things. You know, he so many things. You know, he ran the kingdom. He he invented musical instruments. He yeah. he ran the palace. He, yeah. I mean, he unusual mix, wasn't he? Yeah, really, and so yeah. I think that is important to point out that um, for people listening, it's okay to do other things. You know, yeah. Well, in some ways, it's the it it refines when you get a chance to actually write or or lead or whatever, yeah. the other things are a little bit like refiner's fire, you know, they, yeah. it, with people, with um, relationally, um, it, all of that really helps yeah. when you go to into a crafting yeah. moment when it comes to songs yeah. um, and leading people in yeah. worship, I think because you have a deep empathy for the people and compassion the people that you're leading because yeah. you kind of understand them a little bit more. You, you're walking. One thing about King David, it says that he went in with the people and out with the people. Very and I good. actually think it's one of, it's the secret weapon of David. Yes. He wasn't just hold away writing. Yeah. yeah. He was going in with the people and out with the people. And when he went to the Lord and started to sing and craft, He's he's been with the Lord and he's been with the people. Yeah. So he's yeah. in the muck yeah. with the people. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. yeah. So the songs have got a piece of muck yeah. attached to them, which makes them gritty. Yeah. yeah it's really good. And, it, and it's, you know, it's great doing all these different things, but also in all of it, we've just got to keep our hands clean, haven't we? Yeah. In, you know, in everything that we do, not yeah. just writing songs, leading worship, call it the sort of ministerial bit. Yeah. But in, in every area of our life, you just got to stay on track, haven't you? Yeah. And, that, and that's the hard bit, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I think, and that's why we need each other. Yeah. People who love you enough Yeah. to call you out or say, hey, just I heard you say something and maybe that's probably not the best use of your words. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and people who love you enough to do the journey, I think it's really important. Especially yeah. in these days yeah. where everything is under the microscope. And I just go, well, 
if we've got nothing to hide, yeah. then it's going to be okay. Yeah, yeah, amazing. So I remember year 2000, I think it yeah. was, you inviting Delirious, the band I was in, down to Sydney for the Hillsong Conference. Yeah. Us turning up on that early arrival, like early in the morning, <laughs> isn't it? 6 a.m., first flight in. Yeah, yeah. travelling all the way yeah. from London. Yeah. Oh, we what land. Did we make you do? <laughs> and no, no, it was fantastic. <laughs> okay. But, and all the team are in black suits. Oh, yeah. You know, black, looking sharp, black shirts, <laughs> black ties, you know, like military, like, yeah, 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 you know. Yeah. And, uh, and we're just like scruffy, <laughs> you know, ripped jeans, oh. just looking like a rock band, you know. Yeah. And, um, and we just thought that's funny and like how, how you allowed us kind of to do what we were doing. Oh. And, but at the same time, I was just in awe of what, you guys were doing. I remember standing, you know, with the people in the auditorium. Yeah. And you're up there leading, like an absolute warrior. You know, <laughs> like when you, you know, you, when when yeah, you do that you front foot thing, yeah. you start rocking yeah. the Darlene check rock. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and there's all these people on stage. Yeah. Like it felt like hundreds of people. Yeah. Like. And I remember asking you about that because there was only five of us. <laughs> like, how, how does all this work? You've yeah. got, like, and it, it and just and... felt like a pageant of praise. Yeah. Like, oh, I love that. Yeah, it, like, breathtaking, like, oh, this is, I could imagine this is what it, it might have been like when the Ark of the Covenant came oh, wow. into Jerusalem, like, everything's yeah. going, the trumpets, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Like, this is, I don't know whether you've ever been asked this, but who came up with that model? Like, yeah. whose idea was it to put 200 people on stage and, you know, <laughs> I'm exaggerating. But. Yeah, well, at times there was more than that. Yeah. Yeah, but for, <laughs> for me it was always about why wouldn't you? Like inclusion. Like we've got all these singers yeah. and we've got all these amazing instruments. I remember one time we had about eight guitars, you know, yeah. and I remember the guys just going, dolls, it's just, we can't hear anything. I'm like, yeah. but it's good. It's, yeah. you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. You'll work it out. Like I, I'm not great at, you know, yeah. getting into all the technical side. I'm like, it's great. You'll yeah. be fine. Just work it out. Um, it was about inclusion and just getting the different people who had something unique to bring. Yeah. Being kind of just like a good parent and take all the limits off. It's like bring yeah. what's in your heart to bring. Yeah. But I, I will say this and I, <laughs> I want to say this to you. Like I remember for years and years, and, and can I just say it was never just me, ideas from everybody, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, but we were always really piano-led and vocal-led because that was kind of my world. And, yeah. you know, when Jeff um, Bullock was, it was piano and Russell and, and then we heard the cutting edge story and the delirious story. And because we had all these young yeah. men and women, yeah. guitarists and acoustic guitarists and singers and writers, but you modeled for us this, this new sound of praise and worship that was guitar led. Yeah. And these young, this awesome young man just singing his <laughs> guts out for God and they're oh. like oh, you can do it yeah we can do this and then we you know thank you yeah. times a million oh, it's funny isn't it you, you know and then the guys were like come on you get up like come on Martin can do it yeah. like let's go yeah and then you came out and you modeled by um what's the word when you're up close to some osmosis mm. it's like you you modelled something for mm. for the world mm. that we just we yeah. just took that and we never looked back. Anyway, this this is about you. <laughs> no, but I want it. I want them to hear it because it, it it's actually that's how the kingdom works. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I I love that about the kingdom of God. Yeah. And if we are um, secure, yeah lovers of Jesus in this creative um, construct. It's like the, we can all borrow and learn and yeah. bring the very best yeah. 
to the table. That's so exciting. Yeah, amazing. I mean, I, I mean, you and I have a, a mutual friend, Graham Kendrick. Oh, my Who, man. of course, wrote... The Pope, yeah. All the huge <laughs> yeah. songs, you yeah. know, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Yeah. And we, we, we love Graham. Yeah. And um, he was kind of like... He is the grandfather of worship in the UK. In the UK, yeah. And... Um, you know, every generation passes something down, don't yeah, they? And, and, yeah. and all we did was sort of take what Graham had and we just turn it up a little bit louder. That, that's, yeah. wow. that's, that's all it was wow. really. It, yeah. The same thing. Yeah. And it's fascinating for me as I travel around the world, seeing how much um, you, the Hillsong model of worship, you know, that's again, that pageant of praise. Mm. It's, it's infiltrated mm, the whole amazing. world. And, and of course, your heart behind that was the mum thing of let's, yeah. let's just have everybody on. Yeah. And, and I love that about church. It encourages kids of all ages, doesn't it? Yeah. And you don't even have to plug them in. They're just listening yeah, and they're just right. there. Um, but um, we are at another time in history, though, aren't we? Where we are. You kind of yeah. feel like something new is about to happen, yeah. um, which will again break, break the mould. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what that is. I don't know, but I mean, maybe you do. Do you, do you have any feelings of like what, what, what it's going to look like in the next twenty years? Uh, from a sound point of view, I don't really. Yeah. And I, I kind of like. I feel like that's kind of someone else's yeah. thing to pull out of the ground. But I do think it's going to take bravery, like a sense of fearlessness. Yeah. And I, I think that will be a, that in itself will bring a new sound. Yeah. It's going to have to be fearless. We, there can't be any fear of man. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've said to you before how much I love your Ruby. She's fearless. When she gets in the presence of God, you know, she's fearless. She yeah. just, it's like, she's a flame. She's just a flame on legs, yeah. you know, for, for Christ. And I feel like it has to be that. Yeah. Or it's not going to break through yeah. like it needs to because the noise of the world is just getting louder and louder. Yeah. So this, this next wave when it comes to the the praises of God mm. and the worship of God, it's it's going to be brave. It's yeah. going to be fearless yeah. and mighty. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like we're, I feel like it's it's begun. It's like, I don't think we're waiting for it. I think it's begun, but we've just got to now follow the Holy Spirit and be really brave in doing yeah. so. Yeah, I love that so much. We'll revisit that in a minute because <laughs> I, want to, I want to talk about a little bit more about that, the sort of, the buzzword is purity and worship at the minute, isn't it? Yeah. And I want to talk about how we navigate that. But rewinding, so I'm back in the auditorium. I'm watching you leading worship. Hillsong Conference Year 2000, thinking this is the most incredible thing I've ever seen and experienced. But then the joy of sort of, like you say, becoming friends and our families interacting. And, and actually a lot of people would be surprised how much love and friendship there is within our yeah. community, isn't it? And, and in some ways, very little competition. I think yeah. we really do cheer each other on. It's and, amazing, actually. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, then, you know, you're inviting us into your house. And I think we came down to Australia with our six kids and yeah. stayed in your house yeah. for a couple of weeks. And that all the kids were on mattresses. Yeah. And, and um, love it. I always remember... <laughs> Yeah, I always remember, um, well, a couple of things. Um, classic Brits forgetting to put sunscreen on. I was going to say, do you remember me following yeah. you all around with sunscreen? Yeah, like, sunscreen. guys, you've got to understand. You've got to, and like, no, no. We're, yeah, we're fine. It's, it's fine out here. Yeah. And then like an hour later, we're completely pink. But anyway. Um, I but I, I, the other thing I've, I must confess is that I crashed. <laughs> I hired a van and I crashed it into your wall. As I was reversing, and, and Mark was very gracious. He did one of those, oh, it's fine, but, yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I was young. It's all right. Our children did it too. It's fine. It's I, fine. I probably did it as well. It's all good. And it's then only I, a thing. I know, I know, it's but I, I thought about that for years. 
But do you remember when you came and stayed with us? Mm-hmm. Um, Ruby was about to be born. I'll never forget and, it. Um, I'll never forget you it. You know, so we'd had f- four by then. And, and I always remember, again, like we, we didn't really know much about hosting and you'd flown all the way from Australia mm-hmm. to England. Mm-hmm. And for some reason we had the bright idea of, oh, we don't have a spare bed, so we're going to buy a blow-up yeah. inflatable yeah. bed. We're yeah. going to, ah, oh, it's going to be great. <laughs> I think the following morning you woke up and it had deflated overnight, hadn't it? And we just slept on the ground, yeah. And I felt so bad about that for years. I was like, Anna, I I think there's a puncture in it. And they've flown all that way and they're just lying on the floor. (laughs) (laughs) But we laughed about it. it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just love it. And but that that's the stuff, right? Yeah, it's the stuff. And yeah. then and then you know Anna was pregnant with who who was to be Ruby. Yeah, we're having food one night. Yeah, and then all of a sudden Anna's like, She's "We in, we got to go. Yeah, we got to go." And yeah. I'm like, you know, oh. we were actually having dinner at this yeah. really fancy place. Yeah. The four of us. You've been wanting to go there forever. That's right. And um and. She's like, I'm timing contractions. So yeah. her and I are timing contractions. Yeah. And then Mark says to the waiter, who's very slow, and yeah. he's like, we don't want the experience. Yeah. We just want the food. <laughs> just bring the food out. We've got a problem here. Anna's like, yeah. um, I'm not leaving here until I've had food. So we're like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, we've got dessert. Yeah. You know, she wanted a dessert, but Mark was like, <laughs> oh. Smithy. Go and get the Go car and get right the car. now. He went, into, he went into leader <laughs> yeah. mode. Yeah. I know. And then we left you at home. We went to the hospital, left you at home with both sets of parents. Both sets of parents. parents and the kids. And the- Guys, I hope you're okay. Yeah. I know you've flown in from Australia, but here's our parents. <laughs> we went off to hospital. Ruby was born. Yeah. And on a Saturday, yeah. Sunday yeah. morning, you were leading worship yeah. at our church. Yeah. And we brought Ruby, dedicated, wrapped Ruby. up, and dedicated her, and you you sang over Ruby. Yeah. But don't you think, <laughs> when you know Ruby now, that all makes sense, oh, doesn't it? Makes me cry. I know. I, but, yeah. I love Ruby so yeah. much, and when I see her, I feel very protective yeah. of her. She's yeah. very, very special child. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean... That was a beautiful morning. It was the Lion King moment. And then the other thing I will add, then that night you had 100 people, oh, uh, literally 100, because I remember the midwife right. coming to the house yeah. to check on Anna, who'd had a baby 24 hours yeah. earlier, absolutely freaking out. And we're having a huge we're party. A massive party. And we're like, <laughs> yeah, come on in. <laughs> And this poor midwife's like... This poor midwife, What anyway, is going on here? Yeah, that I was know. that weekend. Should I report you all to yes. the social service? <laughs> oh, but <laughs> great days, you know, and, you know, like we... You know, it's it's hard to make old friends, isn't it? You know, it really and, and is. once you once yeah. you find great people, you, you hang on to them and you make sure you don't let the stuff get in the way, don't you? Yeah. That's it. Um, and, and I think for our children, um, it's really important for children to see parents like who are really following Jesus, um, how, how they relate and have, have normalcy yeah. in the midst. And because, you know, I loved how when Zoe's getting married and her and Indy are talking, and yeah. I'm like, like you, you can't, that is really, really beautiful. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that, but it takes time and intentionality yeah. to build long lasting friendships. Yeah, I know, it's yeah. amazing. So, look, let's go right back to the beginning. Uh oh. So, you're, you're growing up and you're like a, a child star in Australia, aren't you? Kind of, yeah. You know, you know yeah. and, and you're sort of got your own name developing. And then you obviously, you know, you end up in this world called worship leading and church yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and all of that and then writing all these songs. And how, how did that, what was that journey? Explain to us like, you know, your, your upbringing and how you ended up being at Hillsong. Yeah, like I was always singing. Yeah. You know, been paid to sing since I was 10. Amazing. So, yeah, odd. 
amazing but odd. Yeah. Always been a little bit different from what's yeah. going on in the in the world. Um, but got radically saved. Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah, I was already living out of home. Wow. Long story. Um, and then when I started going into church, I, I was living at the back of a single mum's house and she lived just around the corner from the church my father yeah. had started going to. Wow. So he actually took me to a youth meeting there. That's where I got radically saved. And then I just kept going. Yeah. I was at everything. Yeah. And the two women who took me under their wing was the music minister and the, yeah. you know, the choir director. Yeah. And they invited me to their table. Yeah. You know, so I kind of was the kid that grew up, yeah. you know, beautiful parents, but they were working through their own stuff. Yeah. Um, and the music minister just, they just kept discipling me into Jesus. And I tried to sing at church, but yeah. to be honest, the first few years I wept as wow. God was just doing a work in my heart and, wow. you know, teaching me. He's like the perform. You don't, he said to me, you never need to perform for me. Right. So I'd only ever known performance. Yeah. So he just put that to death in me, which was wow. really interesting, but it was very deep yeah. and beautiful. Yeah. Just restoring my identity yeah. to him rather than what I did. Yeah. Because it was ingrained in me from a little child, yeah. you know, perform. And, Amazing. Yeah. So eventually like then mark and i started he was i met him in a band he's a drummer yeah we started going to high schools doing high school ministry yeah and i could do that we'd sing kind of secular songs and yeah. then someone would get up and preach and then we'd do more worshipy songs keith green yeah. you know that was kind of where i was coming into that world of keith mm. green music and just getting wrecked right, right? Yeah. every time i touched worship I got wrecked and I had to kind of keep, like, what is the power when, of that? When you use the word wrecked, what, like my, what, I, what, is that, what does that mean? My heart, I'd just weep. I could, it was like I could feel the Lord in my heart. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I would just weep. Yeah. Like my best friend <laughs> at the time, she said to me, are you ever going to stop crying? <laughs> and before God... I'll tell you, I said to her, I hope so. Because yeah. I, it yeah. was just like, but every time I went close to worship, it was very yeah. different than singing just songs. Yeah, yeah. The worship just got me. And um, finally, mm. when we moved to Sydney yeah. and we started going to Hills Christian Life Centre, we, we wanted to be involved in youth ministry because... I had been to a church where I wanted to be involved in worship and I took my keyboard in mm. and they'd said to me, that is the Lord's, that is the devil's instrument. <laughs> and if you bring that in here, yeah. you won't be allowed to come back into the church. Amazing. That's my Korg Poly 6, It's right? crazy, Was isn't that it? the devil's instrument? I know. So it wasn't even a so drum kit. It wasn't it was even just a, just it a, was a Korg Poly 6, <laughs> my friend. Yeah. And so I kind of marched back out and I yeah. thought, well, I don't ever want to be involved in music ministry because that's yeah. weird. Yeah. But let's do youth. So when we came to Hills um, Christian Life Centre, Mark and I were like, let's be involved in youth. Mm. And they said, no, we don't need anyone in youth. We need someone in worship. I'm like, oh, my goodness yeah. me. So it was a bit of a wrestle, but we finally were like, well, this is what's needed, yeah. right? Because isn't that, that's what we do, right? Yeah. This is following yeah. Jesus' life. It's yeah. like, where's the hole? Okay, yeah. I'll do that. Amazing. So I resisted. It's incredible, <laughs> amazing. But I've always admired that about you. You know, there are, there are some people that lead songs, aren't there? Yeah. Uh, but you, it's like you going to war every time and I can see that it's like every time it's important yeah. and you know you don't mess around it's like you're going into battle you want there's a shift in the room where okay people we're yeah this is a life-changing moment mm. you don't waste any moments I hope and, not. and I think that is what separates you though I think you I've always loved that about you um you know, that I can get a bit intense. 
<laughs> which I'm like, <laughs> I, wish I, would, I wish I could take that off. But it's because, like, you know, when the Lord grabs your heart, like yeah. I just, and, and the freedom and the wholeness mm. that that brings. Yeah. I just don't want anyone to miss it. Yeah. And that's where I get, I do get a little bit like militant, but it's out of love. It's not out of even striving. I'm just like, I just don't want anyone to miss it. Yeah. No, it's just like, right, come on, people, in line. Yeah. We're going. I mean, I have been known to, I remember a couple of worship nights we did in America. I love Americans, so I don't know why, (laughs) but... I walked out and I'm like, people are taking photos and yeah. we're trying to leave and people are just like, chick, chick, chick. Yeah. And I literally stopped the song. Mm. I'm like, all right, yeah. take your photos. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. I said to the team, turn around, yeah. take your photos. Are we good? Yeah. Great. Phones away. Mm. Let's go. Yeah. Because again, it's so easy to get distracted. Mm. Whereas the Lord is calling us in to something so pure within himself. Yeah. And it's through that, you know, that we experience transformation yeah. in his presence. And yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a... Amazing. Let's go. So tell us, I, I heard um, someone else's podcast talk about you and there was a moment where you were about to do a recording with Integrity Music, who's an American <laughs> record label. In the day, I don't know what year that was. Maybe 1997, something like okay. 96, maybe. And good, they, good with the they, years. they were, they'd all flown down from Nashville, yeah. or or maybe Mobile, Alabama, yeah. somewhere like that, down to Sydney with a whole crew. They're going to record the Hillsong mm-hmm. worship record of mm-hmm. that moment. And and I think I remember rightly there was another guy that was heading up the worship at the time at Hillsong and. It was all set to go ahead, and then at the last minute, mm-hmm. you step in, and well, no, he stepped out. Yeah, and it was yeah. like tag, you're it. Yeah, I didn't. So suddenly you're yeah. thrown in. Yeah. to this thing. I just have to say because I yeah. wouldn't have stepped in in a no, million no, no. years. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, out of my way. <laughs> Off you go. Yeah, um, but. Um, and I remember this, you know, what I heard on that podcast was how controversial it was. Yeah. Which to us now seems ridiculous. I know. That, that you were the first woman to lead worship on a record for that label. Mm-hmm. And it threw them into chaos. Mm-hmm. All the executives, you know, you're talking about a white male board of executives mm-hmm. saying, oh, no, there's this. There's this woman down in in Sydney, and she's now fronting this recording. Yeah. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Can we do that? And um, and she's like wearing a, a trouser suit. Like yeah. this is like er, this everything radical. radical. <laughs> it's, it's so funny now, isn't it? But, and, well, at that time, it's really funny because I was pregnant. Amazing. With Chloe, which yeah. really threw everybody. Yeah. Like she's not only a female, she's actually a pregnant female. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So like, like taboo. So many things wrong taboo. about it. <laughs> but I think people need to realise how groundbreaking that was mm. and how amazing you were as a pioneer to step into that space. Mm. And of course, all the brilliant worship leaders that have followed that we would know I love, you know, Carrie Jo, mm, Jen Johnson. My darlings, yeah. You know, e- even my own Ellie. Oh, my God. You know, would have, you know, Brooke, all you gave them permission. And, hmm. now, and now the world is full yeah, of so everyone funny. leading worship. And, yeah. and, and you think, how beautiful is that? But how crazy that, that there was even that thought. I know. And, um, you know, so thank you for that. And I, oh. and I you know, probably interesting, wouldn't. interesting, for us as a team, though, the, the radical thing for us as a team in that moment was not about me leading because we had me, others, yeah. female worship leaders. It was never a deal in Australia. Yeah. It's never been. A, no. I've never felt less than because I'm a female. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Never in my life. 
Um, only once being in America. Yeah. But anyway, that's a whole other podcast. Okay, that's another, that's, that's volume two <laughs> that's of the volume podcast. Two. <laughs> but for our team, it was because our friend and pastor had made a mistake and he had to just go yeah. into another kind of healing journey for a while. Yeah. We were so loyal to him. Mm. So it wasn't just me. All of us were really wrestling with that. Yeah. How can we do this? It feels so disloyal Sure. to him. And I remember because I said um, our pastor had asked me and I said, not a chance. Yeah. I am not doing that. Yeah. Um, and but I remember sitting on our driveway at home just crying mm. and it was like 100 degrees. We were eating Popsicles. I just remember how it was. I was sitting on the driveway, crying, I'm pregnant, and um, Pastor coming and sitting on the driveway with us and yeah. saying, You really have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and that was when, and so we went to the team, and I'm like, I'm really sorry. Like, yeah. I apologize, but this is yeah. what we have to do. So yeah. let's just pray. And, you know, I don't think there was a video. There was. Ca- um, People just with their own video recorders, right. but there wasn't a video. So it wasn't filmed. Wasn't filmed. Amazing. And I look back at that and I think, how gracious is God? Because the team, yeah. we basically wept our way. Amazing. So what for us? It wasn't about the female worship leader. Yeah. It was about our friend is broken. Yeah. And we're going to lead yeah. out of this. Yeah. And that's that's amazing. and that's another whole that's conversation. That's another whole it? conversation about in today's world, it would be unthinkable to do a project live and not film it because that's how people yeah. um, digest media now, isn't yeah. it? And worship music, they want to see. Yeah. Um, but the, the amazing thing about that live recording is that it went on to be. Yeah one of the biggest selling records in America. Yeah, it, and it with, literally just went with like, you, Yeah, <sighs> with this pioneering woman, you know, like fronting it. But of course, every project needs a song, doesn't it? Yeah. And there was this key song that came, yeah. Shout to the Lord. Yeah. And I was talking with Brooke about this, Brooke Leisurewood, how there are some, you know, we all get given a lots of songs. Yeah. And some are okay, aren't they? You know. Oh yeah. Look, I, yeah, I could release but, an album of yeah. really bad songs. We've all got to make like all feel shelves <laughs> songs like that no one needs to yeah. hear. Yeah. But every now and again, I was saying to Brooke, it's they're like bombs, aren't they? They're like you get this hand grenade of a song, which you feel like you've had nothing to do with. Yeah. In a sense, you know, it's just sort of kind of comes. Yeah. Yeah. And and often very quickly yeah. because somehow that's the nature of these songs is you know you don't work on them for a year they're just there they just appear and (laughs) shout to the lord yeah is is a hand grenade in the the remit of Mm. the worship music the history of worship music globally how on earth i mean tell us about that song where were you when you wrote that yeah i was at our home our rented home we had a um, motorcycle engine part business. <laughs> As you do. As you do. Yeah, my sister and I used to rep yeah. motorcycle engine parts into the motorbike shops, you know. So Brilliant. these two blonde girls are going, want to buy some gaskets? Yeah. And they're like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If it all fails, <laughs> what we had this to do. whole thing that you're doing, you can always go back to that. That's <laughs> what we had to do. Um But, you know, I remember Amy and Chloe just little and it was just tough. Like Mark and I had this desire to be out of this business, but there wasn't really to do that. We weren't able to. I was singing jingles at nights when the kids were in bed to make money. And uh, and I loved doing it, actually. It was really good. Um, And I just sat down out of frustration and opened my Bible and really shout to the Lord, you know, I can't take credit between Psalm 96 and Psalm 100 is Mm. that song. Yeah. And it just, I I played it. I didn't even write it. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't play it to our, I didn't like, oh, I've got a song. Let's go play it to someone. I hung on to that. Right. Yeah. And just 
I was very not I was not very confident when it comes to writing songs. Yeah. So it was a very rare thing for me to say, "Hey guys, I think I've got this song." When I finally played it mm. to our worship pastor and our music director, yeah. I made them stand with their backs to me. Yeah. Because I was just so embarrassed, oh, and I'd be like, "I love that." My Jesus, my Savior, change it if you don't like it. Yeah. All right, because I know it's not very good. <laughs> Lord, they're like the whole way through, yeah. and at the end, I remember Jeff turned around just with tears in yeah. his eyes. He's like, "We're going to do that this week." Thank wow. you. Like it was just like yeah. that. Once it left my lips, it left my life. And can you remember the first time you did it? Yeah. What? We were in a race course. How did it feel? Um, the church stood up. It was just in an offering. It was actually wow. in an offering. It wasn't even in worship. And yeah. people just started standing up. <sighs> wow. So it was quite unusual. And, it, yeah, it just left. Yeah. I'm like, wow, I've never experienced anything like that before. Yeah, and, it, and it's, it's otherworldly, isn't it? It's like something only God can really do. Yeah. Because it, it's, you know, it's beyond. Yeah. Oh, it's, crafting, isn't it? And creative. Yeah, it's just and that's sort of, like, I can't take credit for no. that. It's like, did you feel the mountains? It's like, you know, I can sing of your love forever. Yeah. There, there's these signature melodies mm. that really help kind of solidify our theology. Yeah. They give us, they give us like an anchor. Yeah. And, you know, there are, when I think about the songs of the last kind of, 30 years and Graham is shine, Jesus shine. And I mean, we're very, very blessed yeah. to be living in a world where these songs are accessible yeah. to the world. Yeah. And shout, I mean, it was before we could get anything on, you know, online and do it all. It was just, it was one of those things that I'm like, mm. how did that happen? Yeah. We started receiving letters. Yeah about this song from the other side of the world. And I'm like, I don't even know how people have heard this song. Yeah. But people started recording it and when we're singing it and sending it. And I remember getting a phone call from a pastor, the very famous pastor. Um, and I wasn't on staff or anything mm. like that. And they put him through to me, gave him my number. And I'm like, no, no, you don't want me. You want our pastor ring, and that he kept ringing back. No, I don't. I want you, and I'm like, yeah. no, you don't. Yeah, you you don't want to talk to me. And then he finally said, no, yeah. I do. This song. Yeah. And he said, I've just heard it. I've had to pull over on the freeway and weep. Oh. And I just wanted to say thank you. And I, I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. Yeah. You know. So I've all. Yeah. I can't take credit for it, but I've always been in awe of how God does that yeah. with certain yeah. things. Yeah. And still after all these years, you know, knowing you, well, I, I know that that matters to you. I know yeah. that when it all is said and done, yeah. if you're getting a phone call like that from yeah. someone who's touched by it, that's it, isn't it? Game over. Like, it, it doesn't matter about the rest of it. No, absolutely um, not. But it, it's interesting, you know, and something that we don't really talk about publicly mm -hmm you know, especially in this sort of forum is, of course, you know, when, when a song like this comes along mm -hmm. to any songwriter, it, it opens doors, doesn't it? Yeah. It, you know, in the natural, it, 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 cha it does change your life. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes we can be guilty of, as a community, pretending that it doesn't affect us. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, like it's, it's all for God, you know, like, yeah. but of course we're human beings. Yeah. And then we have to adapt to this new world that we are suddenly thrust into. Of, like you say, you know, people ringing you saying, this has literally changed my life. It's changed my family's yeah. life, this song. And, and then, oh, I've booked a plane ticket. Yeah. Can you come to Singapore? Can you yeah. come to America? Can you, we want you to come and sing that song in our church. Yeah. Can you come to Africa? Can you yeah. come? And suddenly, this song that was written in the shadows mm -hmm. in a very, very private space becomes part of people's lives. Yeah. And your life does change. Yeah. And it would be wrong of us to sort of spin this thing of, yeah. oh, no, no, like yeah. it, 
Yeah. Hasn't affected me in the slightest. Yeah. yeah. But actually, our lives have changed over the yeah. years because of the music and yeah. what God has called us to. Uh, and opportunity, you know, like people know about what we do and then the, we have this awful thing called song royalties, you know, where the, the, the more something's sung, the more yeah. that we always sit, you know, we get a, a check in the post and then yeah. maybe a bigger one the next month yeah. and then, and it goes on, doesn't it? And how have you navigated all of that? Because there'll be a lot of people listening to this going, oh, like, you know, they've all worked all this out. Yeah. You know, they're, they're all, you know, they'd never think about all that stuff and money and what to do and, you know, what, what school should we put our kids in and where are we going to live and this car, you know. You know, I can't imagine Darlene thinking about what car to buy, you know, this, that's impure. Yeah. But how, how do we navigate all that? Yeah. Yep, you have to navigate it um, with good counsel mm. and with people who love you for who you are and not for what you can do for them yeah. or et cetera. I think, um, you know, God bless my husband. When I remember getting my first, like, a royalty check. Yeah. And, look, to be honest, Martin, you know, I'd always, I'd earned my own money, mm. right? So... I'd earned a lot of money yeah. from 10 years old. Sure. So, you know, when I um, started earning royalties and, and remembering how the Lord had asked me to, like, to trust him and to, like, really die to that. Mm. So it felt wrong on as many levels as you can imagine. Mm. It, I... I cried a lot because I thought this is going to ruin things. Yeah, yeah. I really did. Yeah. Before God, I'm like, this is going to ruin things. It's going to ruin my friendships yeah. with my teammates. Yeah. Because they're all putting in the same hours as me. Yeah, yeah. There's, there doesn't seem any equity here yeah. Yeah. that is um, right and fair. So, you know, I had to get some help on understanding even royalties. Yeah. Why? Mm. Um, we decided as a couple that um, I, this is going to sound weird to many people no, and that's okay, great. but I asked Mark and then I, we had to have a board for a ministry and I'm yeah. like, I, so I asked them to, I don't want to know about any money. Yeah. I don't want you to tell me mm -hmm. um, because I have to know in me yeah. that that isn't a part of the equation. Mm -hmm. And my husband has been so, so beautiful, um, just kind of protecting me. Mm. And look, not everybody has that at their fingertips, but for us it was really important. When money started to come in in big ways, mm. we decided to, like there are certain laws in Australia that you can't, on ministry, this is ministry money, that you can't spend that money on. You can't just go and buy Yeah. I'll oh, buy a house by yeah, the sea. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's just not that kind of thing. Sure. Um, so we started Mercy Ministries, mm. you know, really put a lot of finance in there. We started Tell us to work in. a little bit more about that, Mercy Ministries. Oh, it was a ministry we started for women who were suffering with life Amazing. disorder, yeah. you know, and through a, some really sad things that happened, it kind of folded many years later. But. Yeah. We we started to put money into Rwanda, yeah. which was a you know we're still in we're building a training center yeah. in Rwanda, in yeah. Rwanda now. Like it's it's so much a part of our lives, um, and just trying to find ways that before God we could go right. We are mm. we want to use this money not just to feather our nest, but to see what we can do with it. You yeah. know, when it comes to seeing people's lives change for the glory of God. So it has been a wrestle. I mean, I do remember buying a car. Yeah. My husband bought me a car. Yeah. A little Suzuki Swift. Yeah. <laughs> Come right? on. Tiny little thing, but it was new. Yeah. I'd never had a new car. Yeah. yeah. And I remember driving home and some friends on the worship team. Yeah. Um, and they didn't mean anything bad, but I drove in and they go, toot, 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 yeah. shout to the Lord, toot, 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 <laughs> right? And I 
And that was it oh, for did me. did you die? Yeah, it makes me cry now yeah. because I'm yeah. like, this is what I was afraid of. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. you yeah. know, then we go on this journey and then I was leading our team by then. So I'm like, all right, I actually have to do the work now mm. of what does the scripture say mm. um, about finance? Mm. What does the scripture say about success? Yeah. Because actually by this stage, there's a lot of people earning money through royalties and yeah. young people. Yeah. And I'm like, this is going to blow us up yeah. if we don't find a way. And, you know, so I tried to do teaching on what the Bible says about yeah. success. By that time, God was so gracious to put Joyce Meyer in our lives, which yeah. she's in both our lives. And yeah. she was really the first one who'd talk some real good straight talk to me yeah. about um, finance yeah. and yeah Mark and I have just been on this very big learning curve yeah. over 30 years yeah. and um, you know I don't the crazy thing is that the more you give away God just keeps like here yeah, let me yeah. trust you with more and I'm like I don't know yeah. God how this and works. I've seen that in your lives you know <laughs> you, you, I can say that absolutely to anyone listening you you've modeled that and, <laughs> but thanks yeah. for being I'm just trying to be honest with, because, with you because it does yeah. matter it does and look yeah and I'm not again like I love home I love having a beautiful home I yeah. home's a value for me it's yeah. not just where we sleep um but actually as you get older and you realize it's only stuff yeah. and it's actually the the people it's people it's Jesus yeah. and people that are the, the true treasure of this world. And, and you just got to be good at not letting things cling to you. Yeah. It's like clean yeah. hands, pure heart. And we've all got to be responsible for yeah. that before the Lord. But it's, it's, it is super important that we do talk about it because we have to talk we've got about another it. generation yeah. coming through. where Because I think we were probably the last of that crew yeah. that were writing songs without an aspirational path. Yeah, they're, they're, right, they're, right. They're what, when we were writing, yeah. when you were writing Shout to the Lord, when I was writing, I, could, I, I wasn't thinking about, oh, if it goes there or goes there, or then, then oh, maybe it, that will oh. bring me a reward. Yeah, it was just nothing There wasn't to really do a with scene, anything. was there? No, there wasn't, no. But now, um, and again, this is why it's important to talk because this isn't a judgmental thing. We're just trying to like bring this into the light, bring it into the light. so that uh, it, right. it can be a great conversation. Yeah. Is how does a, an eighteen-year-old songwriter yeah. in the church today yeah. genuinely kind of keep their hearts pure and hands clean when you know that there is an aspirational? Yeah. Part? If you if you write a song that is sung in many churches around the world, that's yeah. you know. Hey, that means I could do that and do that. Possibly, yeah. Who knows? But um, and that that is always going to be at the back of your brain. That yeah. voice going, and then and then that affects the way you write songs. Yeah. Because you're then writing for what you think people might like. And I and Where I then it discounts it from yeah. being worship. I hate to say that. Yeah, that's not the song of the Lord at that point. No, that's right. Yeah. And, it, and you know we don't. We're not the, the Jesus police of people's hearts and motives. No. So we, we have we have to teach that. Yeah. To say how how are you yeah. when you're writing this? Yeah. And I think mothers and fathers, shepherds, mm. you know, I with our team now who are who are beautiful, but I want to know they are cared enough about that we'll have the conversations with them. Yeah. Because we care not just about today for them, but mm. we care about their future. We want yeah. them to have longevity. Yeah. Doing whatever God has called them to do. And it will bring success. I mean, the Bible doesn't shy away from it. Yeah. So that's not the thing to shy away from. It's the stewarding yes. of our hearts before God. Yeah. That it just needs daily, hourly yeah. attention. Yeah, yeah. Um, may, maybe you can write a book on it. <laughs> that, that's your maybe next you, project. Maybe you could. <laughs> because I think it is super helpful to like look at the whole. It's like the gospel, isn't it? You can't preach half the gospel, yeah. which is sort of favour and blessing. You know, there's lay your life down, you lay know, your deny yourself. Down, yeah. There's a whole other side to it that we don't often preach about. And I think, yeah. but um, 
Anyway, like, I mean, we could talk about that all day, but um, yeah. my mind goes back mm -hmm. to, I think, 2013. Mm -hmm. And Anna and I, um, it's the middle of the night. We're, we're at home. Mm -hmm. It's the middle of the night and the phone goes and it's your daughter, Amy. <laughs> yeah. And she's saying, hey, guys, um, I just need to let you know that mum's got cancer. And so you're not expecting that phone call in the middle of the night, are you? And, um, you know, we wanted you guys to know, of course, you know, we didn't sleep the rest of the, you know. Sorry about that. No. <laughs> um, what was that like for you? Like, you know, tell us as much as you want about that whole yeah. part of your life. I mean, it's, again, it's not something you ever expect. Um... And I, I literally was going Christmas shopping with my girlfriend and having a, a breast check on the way because I'm a multitasker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, get a manicure, <laughs> buy a bag, do, do that. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, we started the morning there and then, you know, they, the tests increasingly get worse until by the end. You, you know if you yeah. have breast cancer and that's what happened. And Mark was actually on his way to a, um, a mission with one of our friends and so, of course, he came back and just kind of went into a whirlwind. Um, you know, we both lost our dads to cancer. Mm. So, you know, that word cancer is, ha has had a lot of fear attached to us. Mm. But let, let me give you a, just a little piece of God's heart so one of the great ladies in our church, Susanna, God had asked her, she's very prophetic, mm. a couple of weeks before all of this, um, I want you to start writing a book for Darlene. I want you to get her a journal and I want you to write a book of how much I love her and I'm going to give you the words. Wow. So she starts writing mm. this book. So when I go to tell her that following weekend, remember it's Christmas, we're doing all the Christmas services yeah, and, yeah. Um, and I went to tell her, um, she goes, oh, well, that's not surprising at all because the father has been having me write scriptures to you. Huh. And so she pulls the book out of her bag, puts it in my hand. Wow. With all the dates. Oh, and I'm like, "Yeah, what is this? But, you know, it changed things for me Yeah. because I'm like, oh, the Lord has gone before me. Mm. He's making a way. You know, it wasn't a very good diet. It wasn't a good prognosis. Mm. He's making a way where there was none. Um, and so that book still it sits on my desk. It's yeah. my, you know, I still had a bit of pain and stuff from I only finished medication this year. Right. Yeah. You know, 10 years. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I still get some pain and I go to that book. Yeah. I read out my promises. Yeah. Like that word that God gave Susanna and all the consequent words um, literally were like a lifeline mm. for me mm. and for my family. Yeah. So, you know, my husband, he's so awesome. You know, he, he can't do anything. So, of course, our house now has every jar of hand sanitizer on every bench. Yeah. He puts filtration systems <laughs> yeah. in the home while yeah. I'm going through chemo. Yeah. Beautiful friends, our beautiful church, you know, mm. supported us. You flew over to spend a few days with Mark, which was like a lifeline for him. Um, and then we came I, through. I remember that. I, I remember landing and... He's like, right, we're we're going we're going paddle boarding. Yeah. And I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's your paddle board. Yeah. And let's then go. and then we went in the and I nearly died in the waves. You and, did. You know, he he did. He wasn't he wasn't the least bothered about me. <laughs> get over it. Get your little pommy. You know, like whatever. Um. But yeah, just profound and you but know. You did something, Martin. You like I was really sick. And from the chemo, not the cancer. Yeah, yeah. But that's, you know, don't send Martin nasty letters about me having no faith because that was our journey. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. That was our journey. Um, but you said to me, what do you want to say? Let's do a song. And I'm lying on, I'm like, 
you know, bald, yeah. you know, <laughs> sick. Yeah. Yeah, let's do a song. Yeah. What do you want to say? I don't remember that. Yeah. Okay. And, I, and I'm like, I just want to say that God is great. Yeah. And you go, great. Well, let's write that then. Yeah. And we wrote this song, You Are Great, yeah. out of that yeah. moment. And, but you had to pull that out of me. That is, you know, I wish people could hear that. She that tenacity in the spirit to pull something out of someone who doesn't know how to express or what to say. Mm. That is worship leading. Mm. That's it. You've got you to help pull it from the depth of someone's yeah. belly to bring faith and hope in who they are. And you did that for me, body, soul, spirit, that like it was profound. And I, yeah, I mm. will be ever, ever grateful. But, you know, you, again, I, I know I sound a bit super spirit, but, you know, if, if we ever reduce yeah. the leading of God's praises and his, his worth mm. to, you know, my two favourite songs and boom and yeah. here I am, lead yeah. them a bit. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like if it's all fun, but if we ever reduce it to that, it's like we, we've just missed the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I often think back to that moment in, and I, I learnt a lot mm. in that moment. Oh, amazing. Well, I, learned, I think I learned a bit more. <laughs> but, I mean, did it change the way you then went on to lead worship? Because I remember yeah. we, we were in India and you were quite fragile because yeah. I think as we wandered up to lead together, you say, hey, can you yeah. cover me a bit tonight because... Yeah. I haven't done this in a while. Yeah. But, and then, and then within, you know, two minutes you were off and just bossing yeah. it again. But, <laughs> um, but how, how did it change the way you led? Well, I think it changed me full stop. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, my daughter's like, Mum, who are you? Yeah. Do you know, I've, I've always been quite, you know, just not so much in worship leading, but in life. I'll just go with, you know, I just want yeah. everyone to be okay. Yeah. You know, that's, and I think after cancer, I've become very, um, you know, i got no time for much crap. Yeah. If I'm allowed to say that. I, yeah. I just don't, I, I just can't be in that atmosphere yeah. either. And I just want to get on with it. Yeah. I want. I want the days to count. Mm. None of us know how many we have. Yeah. But I think being being faced with it like that, like I had to reconcile. Like one of the ladies from our church, the older ladies, came over and spent a couple of hours with me about dying. Yeah. I mean, who, who does that? And yeah. she did it as a gift for me. She's like, you've got fear yeah. about dying. <laughs> Why? Amazing. Let me sit with you. And yeah. she went through the scriptures and prayed with me and laughed. And by the end, I'm like, I'm ready. Let's yeah. go. You know, so having to look at all those things yeah. changes you. Yeah. So how we live, where we live, where we spend our money even. Yeah. yeah. Um, how I parent. Yeah. Um, my sister-in-law who passed away last year after 17 year battle with mm. cancer um she said to me years before she passed she said i i wish i'd lived um now i wish i'd lived all my life like i live now wow how amazing just valuing every minute valuing yeah people yeah not getting stuck in things that don't really matter yeah. conversations that don't matter yeah um, just walking out of the room yeah. when you go, yeah, no, yeah. I can't be part of that. Yeah. Um, she's like, I wish I'd lived like this all along. Amazing. Because yeah. you, you, you suddenly have a new value of your relationships, don't you? Yeah. And that's one thing that I, you know, the older I get and for Anna and I, you know, we often would say, can you believe the joy that we have? in our friendships around the world. Yeah. And 
you know, that we've been able to keep those. Yeah. And, like, who, who has that? You, you know, there's such a joy in the, the width and breadth of all these amazing creative people in our lives and, you know, of all shapes and sizes. And that is a joy, isn't it? Oh, and it's, there is, it's the gold And they're life. becoming our greatest songs in a way. Yeah. Like the songs are okay, but yeah. the friendships and relationships that last, yeah. you you become super proud of that because oh. you've had to battle through some things and, yeah. and and put your own ego down a little bit and yeah. prefer one another and yeah um, and you've you've always done that you know we've watched I you guys do it that, but, <laughs> but um, so the cra- one of the crazy things for me was seeing you transition from, you know, out of Hillsong and then suddenly you and Mark are leading a church. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't see that coming. Neither did we. Like you're, you're this worship leader. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Mark's running a video company. Yeah. Oh, wow, you've now moved up to the Central Coast running a church. Tell us, what's that like, like yeah. making that transition? Yeah, look, it's the one thing we always said we never wanted to do, yeah. right? So be careful what you say. Yeah. Um, but I just remember, like, we had a lot of frustrations and, you know, I'm not blaming that on anybody. I think it was, you know, just in our self, Holy Spirit getting us ready mm. to make a shift because I'm, I'm you know, I, I cling to the things that I know to mm. be true, you know, so it was a bit hard to get me out of that yeah. kind of area. My children loved it, you know, they'd had one home, one school, yeah. all that stuff. Um but Mark just said to me one day, do you want to have another adventure? <laughs> Literally. Yeah. And I'm thinking, because I love fishing. Yeah. And I've always wanted to go fly fishing. <laughs> so I'm like, are we going fly Great. fishing? Be, yeah, going to buy right? some overalls. and No, it's not that, darling. <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> um, and just through a series of miracle conversations, mm. it came that there was a little church up on the Central Coast um, that had gone through a really rough time, didn't have a pastor. And, you know, you've got to remember, we we came from the world of if you can believe it, you can, or if you can dream it, you can have it, let's yeah. go, yeah. to, um, you know, here's this little church, no money, no, mm. yeah. but these beautiful people. Yeah. And all of a sudden yeah. the we opened the scriptures and everywhere we looked it's about coastlands and, and, you know, Isaiah 61 becomes this like, it's like God was writing it himself on the yeah. inside of our bodies, you yeah. know, about restoration and the spirit of the Lord is upon you because you're going to yeah. you preach, you know. Good news to the poor, yeah. And we're like, yeah. what is happening? Stop, stop, stop. But before we knew it, you know, our house was on the market. We talked to the kids um, and they were beautiful, Yeah, you know. I mean, Amy and Hoodie are like, you don't even have to tell us where you're going. We're with you. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I'm like, who are you people? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it was pretty special. And yeah. some of our best friends, they all came with us. And yeah. we're like, let's have an adventure then. Yeah. Because I got saved and I want to see people saved. I didn't get saved to become a worship leader. No. I mean, I just yeah. got to say that. Yeah, yeah. Like I never thought that I would get saved and then God would use me in the in the realm of worship and music and singing. Mm. I just never thought that would be possible. So that was like just amazing. And I still love all of that. But there's this fire in my belly yeah. to see people know Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Bottom line, like, and so, like, I've, I'm not a great preacher or anything, <laughs> but I, I do it because I'm like, I just want to communicate it. I'll sing it or I'll speak it or I'll give you a hug and I'll mm. feed you. Just what it, what are we going to do to present Jesus yeah. to a lost humanity? Yeah. And I think that's what being, you know, pastors has just, I guess, it reawoke that in us, and, and now we want to reawake that in everybody, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it, for us, it didn't feel like it's one or the other. It's yeah. just like God saying, I'm adding this into your world. Yeah. And like Mark had never 
like preach. He'd taught like leadership talks and yeah. things like that. Um, but he's he's amazing. Mm. Yeah. He's a great leader. He's a very secure leader. Yeah. Um, and we just have the best team and you now we've got churches in India and America. Amazing. It's just, it's fun. Yeah, amazing. And we're doing it together and, you know, we just feel very, um, it's it's God's sacred territory, you know, so we're very like, are we going to mess this up? Like we say this to each other all yeah. the time. Like yeah. when we pray, God, we just don't want to mess it up. So keep shaking us so we don't mess it up. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. I love it. I mean, we could go and we could go on talk for hours, on forever, I know, but, but but I I'd like to take I'd like to finish it on that yeah. thing you okay. you you talked about about, you know, you you got saved, you know, you became a Christian. God rescued you, not yeah. so you could just write songs, no. but to give that gift to other people. Yeah. And I think that's what sets you apart. I think that puts you in a another space of sort of who you are and what you mean to people and to the church. And, you know, you've always kept the main thing, the main thing. And all the time I've ever known you, it doesn't take long for the conversation to get back to Jesus. You know, we can talk about a hundred things, can't we? And we natter away and then, oh, but... Isn't Jesus great? You know, <laughs> that'll be one of your lines. Ah, oh, but he is. You know, yeah, and, and you've, <sighs> that is in your bones. That's in, in your fibre, in your being. And um, we need more Darlene's, don't we? We need more well, Darlene's just... in the world. And, and, I, and I think, you know, it's not a surprise to me that you come out of this huge church environment, oh, they're going to lead a church that's, um, you know, like, like you say, it's just you've got to start from the beginning again and build it out of the soil, out of the dirt, get your hands dirty again, you know. There's no car park space with your name on, you know. you just got <laughs> to like... And, and I, I've actually... Anna and I, we've loved that, Aww. seeing that about you, Mike. It's like, yes, come on, like... They're amazing to do that. Oh, look. And so I, I um, you know, I think, I think there's m- much more to come. Mm. And I wouldn't be surprised if there are some more hand grenade songs, mm. you know, that come out of this sort of life of surrender that you live. And, and so I, it feels to me like you're just getting going. Yeah, it? Um, in some ways it does. Like we, I'm doing this project. I never would have done it except my children really, you know, shout to the Lord's 30 years old. Wow. And they're like, you should do something to mark that. And I'm like, what? Yeah. You know, and so we're doing 30 songs and there's some new, there's some re-records, there's some kind of remixed and, um, and it's called Testament. Yeah. And it was Hoodie, my son-in-law, that was his idea. Brilliant. And we've co-written a song called Testament. Um, but it's there to, look, at, it's, I, I don't even know what we're going to do with it. Yeah. Like, what do you do with 30 songs? <laughs> I don't even know. But I just like, this isn't for anyone. Yeah. To please anyone. Yeah. It's, it's like, I just want to say thank you. Yeah. And it just felt like, okay, this is a good way. Yeah. For me to say thank you to the Lord for His His goodness, yeah, and I don't know what we're going to do with it, but I hope it. Oh, but I hope be, it brings a smile it'll, to it'll His face. Be amazing, but isn't it a brilliant season to get to where you're not that bothered about oh, whether yeah. people like it? No, it's like no, great. It's I'll, wonderful. It's so wonderful. Amazing. Yeah. Well, uh, Dars, thank you. Thank you for Martin. for being on this podcast. Thank you, everyone, for joining thank us. Thank you, everyone. Um, listening to us natter along. Um, I, there were, for half of that, I forgot that we were actually doing that. <laughs> oh, no. I, was just, oh, no. I was just enjoying every minute of that. But um, thank you so much. Yeah, Again, you. like I, I really mean it. I think this is the, big, the beginning of so much more. Mm, yeah. And as the church evolves out of its sort of two decades of, you know, big, 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 I think your voice will be very, very important at this moment in history to simply remind people about 
this is about Jesus, you know. Mm. And we sing our songs to him, we, we lift his name up. It's not that much more complicated, you know, and we look after people, we yeah. ser- serve each other. And that's fine, isn't it? Whether it's, it's 20 people in your house or 20,000, yeah. uh, there isn't a model that's better than, than, than another. We just right. do what we can do, don't we? And, and the purity thing... You know, we just got to be really careful because, yeah. you know, I can see massive things that happen that I'm like, oh, that's just so much purity in there. And yeah. and I'm not the steward of your heart. Yeah. You know, we've each, we've each got to be yeah. the stewards of our hearts before God. So I would just say as we go forward, just, you know, keep going to God with your heart. Don't judge one another's worship. That's That's not for us to do. Yeah. And um, let's shine Jesus. Yeah. Because in the end, there's people that still haven't opened their hearts to the love of God. Mm. And if our worship is not leading us to Jesus, Mm. then, you know, we've got to make the adjustments Mm. because people need Jesus. Yeah.